And three, two, one. Hi, everybody. I am Oscar424, and uh, yeah, we're ready for some Rezo Gun. All right. What, <laughs> what I need is the Bid War final result. Determine whether or not. Let me. Lows it real quick. Right. While that's being closed, your options were again pirates, zombies, or ninjas. And the final result is. <laughs> it's the pirate. Pirate! Sweet! So this is the person we'll be saving. Well, some of the people we'll be saving today. All right. So with that, that is all the setup I need. We are doing a system F so seventy percent on rookie. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I am ready to go. Whenever you are. <coughs> Do a quick hydration break and. Right. I think Tech is probably ready. So, if you want to give Tech a countdown to start. All right, I will give a, a three, two, one, go. So, three, two, one, start. Good luck. Thank you. All right. So this is Rezogun. It is a 2013 horizontally scrolling cylindrical shoot 'em up. Such a mouthful. From Housemark, um, they've made a couple other games such as Nex Machina, uh, Alienation. And if anybody watched the uh, PS5 reveal and they saw a game called Returnal, uh, that's actually made by the same developers. Um, oh, also, and kind of like the big one to start it all was Super Stardust and Super Stardust HD, one of my traveling obsessions. So with any shoot 'em up um, the point is go fast, shoot things, and don't die. Pretty much if you look at my uh, little ship there, you'll see a little tiny circle in the center of it. That is the core voxel. And mind you, voxel is just a 3D pixel, so it's fancy. Basically, I can't let anything touch that voxel. If I do, I lose a life. Um, and you can, in fact, game over and die. And where is my things I need to kill? There we go. So, um, let's see here. Uh, get these little guys and finish this stage really quickly. Uh, the first planet, Asa, starts off pretty slow, pretty low-key. Um, not too much to write home about. You have some standard issue enemies that you'll see throughout the whole game, but it gives you a decent mechanic uh, breakdown of how everything is going to work. Now, there are a couple ways you can go fast and shoot things. Uh, the first one that you'll see the most is the gun. You have three to choose from. Uh, I use, and what most spe speedrunners use, is called the Phobos shotgun. Now, okay, it doesn't look like a shotgun right now. It starts off as a sniper rifle. But, uh, once you get a power-up, which you'll get pretty soon, it actually starts creating a shotgun. And it's arguably the best one for speedrunning, because, as you'll notice, I'm getting pretty close to enemies over time. Um, there we go. So yeah, you can see how my weapon suddenly got a little bit of a spread to it. And that's just going to get bigger and bigger over time, to the point where I'm just spraying and praying everything. There's a couple other guns you can choose from, but for the sake of speedrunning, not so good. Uh, let's see here, so you have your basic gun, you have your boost ability, which I will show you right here. Um, it's pretty much an easy way to go from one area to the level to another. But, uh, from an offensive standpoint, it gives you both iframes, so you can just fly through things without hurting that core voxel, and it gives you some uh, a, a boost explosion at the very end, like this. So you can actually damage enemies uh, with it once you're done. Uh, let me get this guy really quickly so he doesn't kill me, surprisingly. No, don't steal my human. Uh, there's also something called an overdrive, which is a literal giant laser face, like a Kamehameha, and it's pretty cool. It pretty much wipes out everything in a straight line in front of you, which is 
pretty nice to have. Uh, but you do have to charge it over time. And the way you can tell if you have things charged, yeah, it's um, if you actually again look at my ship, uh, you'll see two kind of half circles lit up around me. The one on top, the lighter bluish tealish one, is my boost, so I can kind of tell when I have boost. The green one underneath it is actually my overdrive meter, so I can tell how close I am to getting an overdrive, and you'll see that probably in a little bit. Uh, the last ability that you can do some massive damage with is the bomb, and this is the strongest weapon in the game. It's a complete map clearer. Uh, the thing is though, because it's so super strong, you only get so many. You start off with two, and each level gets you one extra one. Also, this is the overdrive. It starts off kinda weak sauce, but over time it gets pretty strong. Um, not as strong as the bomb, but it gets the job done for what I needed to do. Now, I will say we're coming up to the first boss already, and what's kind of funny about this game is the bosses take longer to explain how to kill them than to actually kill them. So I'll try to explain this pretty quickly. This boss has three targets I need to shoot. Uh, once they are shot and dead, I can actually open up the core and damage it to kill it. Now, I do get to use iframes and a boost ability to squeeze in an area that I'm not supposed to technically go into. Um, but this is, uh, in a nutshell, boost is kind of the key here to make things super fast. And uh, you don't want to blink because you'll miss Rototron, which is this first boss. But before it, I'm going to do a quick power dance. See how that goes. So we have the first panel. First panel is dead. I fly back over. I shoot the second panel. I boost in an area I'm not technically supposed to go to. I shoot the third panel, go into the core, and keep shooting to the point where it's dead. <laughs> do the power dance in celebration. And that is the first boss. <laughs> So that, that is Rototron. It's a pretty quick boss, uh, it's, but it shows you kind of how to do everything. Uh, the second boss is kind of the same. It's essentially one extra panel with a couple extra abilities, but no, with no core. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, so every single, bleh, words are hard. Every single level has three phases. And what's kind of funny is if you pay attention to the bottom of the screen, there's a blue bar that's slowly filling up. Once I fill up each like third of a section, that's a phase complete. Uh, what I'm effectively doing is actually filling up the health bar of the boss. Because <laughs> when I fight the boss, that bar goes away. Oh good, I did make it. Whew, I almost thought I yeeted that pirate to its own death. That would have been unfortunate. Um, but... Yeah, they all have three phases. Uh, the boss is always on the third phase, and uh, each level or each planet gives you a little bit of a new kind of gimmick. Uh, the first one doesn't really do much of anything, it just shows you how to play the game. The second planet, Ceres, uh, or second level, introduces a lot more shooty things, which they get a little annoying, but they're pretty slow moving on Rookie, so they're kind of easily dodged, which of course, being a marathon, I've probably completely jinxed myself there. Um, but there we go. So yeah, you'll see bars a third of the way filled up. It's saved. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, so I did mention rookie difficulty. This is Asus Methodus Any Percent on rookie difficulty, and I'll kind of explain like what all that means because it's a little bit of a mouthful. Aces Mephitis is a fancy schmancy way of saying beat all five levels on arcade mode. Plain and simple. Um, the any percent is where things get a little bit fun and exciting. There's the two... Blah, blah. Words again are hard on Sunday morning. Well, at least it's morning here. Um, any percent, and then there's another category, all humans. Uh, that is dependent on those humans you see. and. The, in this case, the pirates, again, because of that costume choice bid war. Any percent means I don't have to save all the humans, so rip some of them. All humans, on the other hand, is I have to save all of them. Um, then the, di the, the, the different difficulties, again, rookie is the easiest, but it's the most competitive. Then there is experienced, uh, veteran, and master. Uh, experienced and veteran are very similar to rookie. Uh, it just adds a lot faster enemies, but 
but all in all, it's pretty much the same. And you can use roughly the same strats in Rookie as you do experienced and veteran. Master just throws that book out the window, and you have to completely change your playstyle. Um, now, in terms of the humans, actually, as you'll see, they're all kind of... Oh, that's actually a dead human. Sorry. There are, there are these little boxes, and let me do a quick sw store of that swag strat to save this human and get an extra life. There we go. Okay, so, those humans. Um, how you save them is every once in a while you'll hear keepers detected, and you'll see some, like green glowy dudes. Rule of thumb. Kill the green glowy dudes. And then a human pops out of a square. Uh, it's always the same human that pops out with the same set of keepers, and the same humans always give the same types of power-ups. Now these power-ups are anything from an extra life to a shield, which gives me a free pass from getting hit, um, points if you're going for high scores, uh, and an overdrive upgrade, which makes my laser face super strong, or the coveted bomb. And like I said before, each planet- ooh, that, that guy almost got cheeky. Uh, each planet gives me one extra bomb. I need them for the speedrun because, honestly, if I don't- if I lose a bomb, that's like 20-30 seconds off the time, or added to the time, right there. So yeah, you essentially go, you kill all the green glowy keeper dudes, case in point, You'll hear a little noise, and you'll see a green line. All of a sudden, a human will pop out of a box. You just pick them up. Also, you can throw them, which I kind of like doing. And you deposit them in one of these receptacles. Uh, this is actually Storm Ruler. This is the second boss. Uh, this is four panels. You shoot them. I'll get pretty close, because although there's a hitbox for actually damaging the boss, the hitboxes... Well, they don't really hold true to actually damaging me, so I can get really close to this boss and not take any damage. Um, but I was actually able to explain that boss before I killed it, so cool. Uh, interesting factoid about that particular boss, Storm Ruler. On every other difficulty, there's actually an unskippable second phase. It's pretty easy. Uh, it'll kind of chase you around the map, shoot these giant balls of death at you and then eventually stop and turn. All you have to do is use a bomb on that particular spot, and then the boss is super dead. Uh, so this is actually not only my favorite level, but this is my favorite phase of the game. There's a really cool flow to it, uh, but it's also a little bit of serious time I'll explain later. And uh, so I'm gonna shut up for a quick second and not screw this up. It shouldn't take too long. Do we maybe have time for a short donation? Absolutely. Well, we've got a $10 donation by Ross saying, Awesome weekend with great runs. This Rizagun run looks insane. <laughs> Asuka is playing it with com great commentary. Keep up the great work, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you for, for your donation. Yeah, and every dollar, euro, what have you, going to the Dutch Cancer Society is a dollar or euro well spent. Um, so yeah, that uh, that right there, that keeper, and why I was I had to do a little bit of serious time there, was the scariest keeper in the game. Now I mentioned the keepers had those green glows, like these guys. There's some that are sequence keepers. Uh, basically, it starts off with only one of them being green and the rest of them being red. If you don't kill those out of order, or if you kill those out of order, I should say, you lose the human, and the human dies. Um, that particular set of keepers at the very end of that phase was a sequenced mode, or a sequenced set of keepers. Now, if I would have lost that particular human, I would have lost a bomb. Which means I would have lost like 20-30 seconds to my time, and then I would have been sad. Very sad panda. So, it's, it's a fun little part, but it's also mildly scary! But yeah, the point of this particular map is um, it starts adding a lot more enemies to the map, uh, particularly spawning on the opposite side of said map. Now, 
Like, honestly, one thing I love about Rezogun is if you actually look behind my, my ship, you can see the entire map. Uh, so you can kind of plan where you want to go next. Because, um, like I said, a lot of things spawn on the back side of the map. Oops. It might be the same patterns. It pretty much is the same patterns every time. But where they spawn is a little different each time based on your location in the map. And sometimes things just might not spawn if you're sitting in the right spot. Okay. Boop. So that was a use of a boost explosion, so I didn't have to deal with those guys. Well, it's just quicker to kill them that way. <sighs> Let's see here. Uh, oops. Uh, where, where, okay. I honestly hate those laser walls. I'm like a moth to the flame. I tend to not pay attention to them and uh, end up dying to them and kind of just have a, well, poop face. All right, let me use my bomb really quickly. There we go. So we are actually getting close to, well, my least favorite boss of this game. It is the most RNG intensive and I hate it. It is a huge case of things I hate it. So this is going to be Atomic Cube. It has this giant red cube that I have to shoot, but it starts shooting off fireballs and every once in a while, it'll shoot off this like decoy cube of gray um, shield voxels. When you shoot the gray shield voxels, they all separate and then it turns into this minefield of madness. So I'm not going to talk during Atomic Cube because um, it's just not fun and I kind of need to have a little bit of focus serious time of sorts, but it still should be done relatively quickly. As long as I, well, five rules of dodgeball, dodge, dodge, dive, dip, duck, and dodge. If I follow that, I'll be fine. But uh, some bless RNG in chat would be fantastic because here's Atomic Cube. Perfect. Whew. I'm just, I, out of all the bosses in this game, Atomic Cube scares me the most. <laughs> I've lost so much time. The nice thing though um, about dying in this game, as long as you don't game over, is when you come back, like boosting, like overdriving, you actually get iframes. So it's not a lost if I die right there. I can just stand there and, or, fly there, hover there, in the middle of all that chaos, and just wail on it for a hot second. But thankfully we got through that pretty quickly. So let us move on to the fourth stage. Now the fourth stage, at this point the game is like, okay, you haven't, I don't think you've died. No, I haven't died yet. You're doing great. That's nice. Um, I kind of want to make things difficult for you. Also, sequence keeper swag strats. You don't need to boost through them. I just do it because it looks cool. It's like self-validation right there. Save that extra life. Uh, these mega spooters are not fun to deal with. Let me boost through them. So yeah, when you boost through enemies, you actually can destroy them in one shot, which is great because those spiders take quite a few shots. They're, they are beefy mega spooters. But uh, yeah, so the game is like, all right, you're, you're doing well, we need to change that. So this is where you're gonna start seeing a lot more enemies on the map, especially on the second and third phases. Also, <laughs> this phase has arguably the meaniest of bosses. I'm not going to tell you the name of this boss, because it kind of ruins the surprise. And by kind of, I mean it totally does. But uh, it's also has the potential to be the fastest boss in this entire game. So if you thought I was beating bosses quickly before, yeah, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> so let's just kind of get through all this riffraff. Um, for this game, you don't have to shoot everything. Uh, you're, there are certain things that I'm looking for to spawn that progresses the level. Uh, let me use that really quickly. You'll see my overdrive is getting bigger and scarier and meaner. 
Uh, that's because I'm getting overdrive upgrades and making it stronger. But like I was saying, I don't have to shoot everything. Like, I don't have to kill these laser walls. I'm just very good at dying to them. So I just avoid them like the plague. Uh, let's see here. Let's take care of that. Um, I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, funny factoid about the humans. So, even if you've, you've killed the keepers, you've picked up the human, the humans can still die, uh, and you can still lose those humans before you save them. Uh, if you uh, if you die yourself while carrying a human, it's rip human. Um, if you let's see here, if you don't save it after a short period of time, aliens come and steal the human. I'm not kidding. It's kind of funny. Uh, if you let's see here. There's ledges, so like, the maps aren't entirely solid. So if you end up accidentally, uh, well, shooting a human off the map, which I may or may not have done many times before, <laughs> you end up killing the human. Um, but yeah, so it can still die. You also tend to- you can throw humans as well. And if you're boosting, instead of throwing it, you like, massively longball this human, and it's kind of fun to do. But I don't quite have a human yet. I'll see if I can show that a little bit later on. I just had to get rid of a lot of clutter on the map because uh, you'll notice things are going to get... This is when things are going to get really messy in here. But anyway, again, third phase. It's time to quickly talk about the boss. Again, not going to say the name because reasons. Um, like Atomic Cube, it also has shield voxels. The difference is it starts with the voxels already surrounding its core. What you're supposed to do is slowly chip away at that shield until you can see the core. I don't do that because it takes too long and I'm impatient. So what I do is I have my overdrive ready and then I will quite literally activate overdrive, which gives me iframes and drive into the middle of the boss itself. And where is, ah, there it is. So, that is kind of a cheeky... There we go. So this is the boss. I'm not getting good patterns on this, so I'm, I'm going to have to... Donation. Oh yeah, time for donations, because I kind of screwed up Doom Slayer. All right, we got a $10 donation by Shiny Black Phoenix. Oh, I said $10, even though it's 10 <laughs> euros. Well, uh, 10 real monies donation. A 10 real monies donation by Shiny Black Phoenix saying, Good luck on Demon Cube, Asuka. <laughs> Thank you, Phoenix. Um, yeah, Phoenix pl actually runs uh, Next Machina, which is another housemark shoot 'em up. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty crazy one, and they're really good, so definitely shout out to them, check them out. Um, but yeah, so I kind of screwed up Doom Sphere, unfortunately. But as you saw, I had iframes after I died, so I can just sit right next to it, wallop on it for a little bit, and uh, still beat it pretty quickly. Whoop. Ooh, that's getting close, that's getting close. Okay, we're fine. All right, so we are literally already on the final level, unfortunately. This is Mephitis. Now, Housemark, real talk, has some amazing soundtracks. Uh, Rezogun, amazing soundtrack. This level song, it, it slaps. It is my favorite song of the bunch here, so um, it kind of works because this is the hardest level. So I can kind of just kind of I can kind of just play along, listen to it, and uh, not die, hopefully. But uh, this phase, or this level, again, it has a lot of enemies, a lot of fast-moving enemies, and then it has a a very annoying floor hazard, particularly those floating rocks because gravity is very optional in this game. Um, those rocks, if I run into them, I die. But if enemies run into them, they die. And if I shoot the rocks, they blow up. If I shoot them right next to an enemy, the enemy dies as well. So I can use them to my advantage, and I try to on occasion. There's also a lot more things trying to shoot me and kill me, which makes things annoying. But it's salvageable. Um, get that guy really quickly. There we go. But yeah, for the most part, it's... Honestly, I don't 
see this one as difficult as level four, but uh, to each their own. Uh, this, I should say, I might as well talk about the final boss while I have a second. Uh, Serpentinus is a giant, if you've ever had a Twizzler's Pull and Peel. It's a black licorice Twizzler's Pull and Peel. When you see it, you'll see it. But um, how it works is it has a whole bunch of phases. You're only going to see one phase. <laughs> Um, what happens after I shoot at it for a little bit, it gets angry, and it Twizzler pull and peels apart into a whole bunch of little tiny noodles. Uh, once I shoot the noodles enough, they will reform and uh, take a little bit more damage and go to the next phase. My goal is to actually kill Serpentinus before it goes into that next phase, which shouldn't be too difficult. Um, if I do go into the next phase, uh, it's a pretty quick pull and peel apart again situation that I just kind of deal with as I get there. But let me get the very last bomb of the game. I don't want to screw that up. That would be depressing. But remember a while ago when I mentioned uh, the the gun that I use turns into like this sniper rifle sniper rifle shotgun craziness? Yeah, we're almost in full burst mode now. So when I get really close to enemies, all of those shots do a lot of damage, which makes things really good against the boss, and I can just kill it so much quicker. Uh, let me get rid of laser walls because I hate them. They're not fun, thanks, I hate them. All right. So yeah, if you have any donations, comments, shout outs, uh, that would be a perfect time, because it's pretty much just me flying around killing things. <laughs> uh, I currently do not have any things, but what I can say is that if you like what we are doing here, then consider subscribing to the ESA channel, because subscribing to the ESA channel helps both ESA and ESG, and you get access to all the ESA emotes as well as the several PSG emotes and yeah you get to support both of the events and B you have heard of Twitch which is free if you have Amazon Prime and you just need to connect it to your Twitch account and then you've got one free sub every month and you can use that free sub here on the ESA Marathon channel if you haven't used it yet. Awesome! And yeah, definitely, definitely that Twitch Prime. I, I I, tend to forget I have it, so it's always good to be reminded, oh yeah, I can use that to help out a cause. Um, but yeah, that was unfortunately the last time you will see Overdrive, and we're actually getting really close to the end, based on these flamey X's that uh, thought about existing and then didn't. Uh, but like I said, we are, we are pretty much right to the final boss. Um, ah, that's what I was looking for. All right, now the l I just realized I didn't use a bomb. No wonder my time is kind of poop. All right, so yeah, we are at the final boss. I would use the bomb normally, but he doesn't take much damage from the bombs here. So it is what it is. So this is the Twizzlers Pull and Peel of Death. I'm kind of trapped between two Twizzlers Pull and Peels, which is a little awkward, but... <gasps> oh no! He got to a second phase. That's all right. But time is going to be right now. <laughs> and that's it. That is Rezogun, Asus, Mephidus, any percent on rookie difficulty. Um, yeah, 27 for me isn't that great, but I also forgot to use a bomb somewhere. And I th oh, I know where I forgot to use it. I forgot to use it on level four, which again would have cut like 20, 30 seconds off the time, but it is what it is. Uh, that's pretty much it. A quick little Easter egg. This congratulations screen changes based on what your difficulty level is. This is very, hey, you beat the simulation. Good gerb. And then later on, it's like, okay, you're actually doing a really good job, but there's a higher difficulty. But yeah, so uh, just general shout outs. Thank you to all the, the friends and family that stopped by and, <laughs> and watched it. Um, Resogun is a really fun game to play. Uh, shout out to the Housemark community, the devs, uh, their Discord's amazing. 
Uh, if you're interested, it is on PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, and PlayStation 4. Uh, it's a really good, fun game to just pick up and play. There's not too much speed tech to learn. It's just go fast, get good. <laughs> and yeah, it's fun. I love it. I hope you had fun watching it and uh, enjoy the rest of the marathon. That's it. All right. Thank you very much for that, uh, Ron Asuka. Uh, coming up, we are going into the final stretch of BSG Online 2. We've got three, three runs coming up. Uh, and right uh, coming up right next, we've got the BPG 13 with Pursuit Force uh, Warlords. And yeah, that's it from my host. I hope you uh, enjoyed that. Uh, I hope it wasn't too much. Hope I didn't mess up too many. And yeah, uh, taking over from me is Tiny Tim. He's gonna support you until the end of the m And yeah, stay safe, guys. And see you soon. Bye.